Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. It is time for the percolator. I'm just kidding. It's time for tobacco fragrances. I have a bunch to share with you. Not sure if I will get through them all, but I have a bunch. I love a good tobacco note in a fragrance. I will say tobacco is one of those notes that is usually in fragrances that lean masculine. I have a couple of more feminine leaning fragrances to share with you or fragrances that can be easily pulled off by those of you that like to smell more feminine than masculine. But just a heads up ahead of time that a lot of these are in the unisex category and some of these do lean a little bit masculine so I'll try to differentiate as we go along in the video today. Do you like tobacco and if so what is your favorite tobacco fragrance? Please drop it in the comments below. Love to hear and see you sharing with each other about your fragrance selections, what you would recommend to each other and if you don't have a tobacco fragrance are you interested in a specific fragrance in particular? Is the one that has caught your fancy or that you're wondering about? Why is it that I love tobacco? Well, lots of reasons. When I think of tobacco, without even thinking of like the scent of tobacco, the smell of it, I think of cigar bars. I think of old Havana in Cuba and particularly like the old school imagery of the sexy like Havana nightclubs when Havana was in its heyday. I also though think of rural Virginia and other parts of the South that grow tobacco. So for many years, I would drive through a corridor on my way back and forth in between two points that had a lot of tobacco fields and have the wooden structures that are on farmlands where you hang tobacco to dry. There's a name for them and I'll put it up here if I remember. But I love the imagery, like the visual imagery of going by tobacco farms and seeing uh, tobacco being harvested and also put into those sort of smoke houses or whatever they're called to dry out. The smell of tobacco can be really different from one fragrance to the next. It may in one fragrance smell wet, like very damp, earthy, and sweet. And in another fragrance, it may be drier and not have that earthy quality and maybe lean more in like the dry grass direction. So it can be all over the place and I enjoy it as a note that for the most part evokes warm memories for me in some form or fashion. It evokes those those visual images that I mentioned. Uh, and in a lot of fragrances, quite frankly, it just smells really good to me. It smells really good. I find tobacco to be a sensual note, a little bit exotic as well. And it's me, it's me. So let's talk about some of the ones that are in my collection. And don't forget to share your favorite down in the comments as we're chatting here today. So let's kick off with the three fragrances that I think have a feminine lean, starting with Nirvana Amethyst. I don't know where I put this bottle. I'm wondering if I gave it away to someone or where it disappeared to, but Nirvana Amethyst from Elizabeth and James, which you can still find on the secondhand market for relatively inexpensive. It's tobacco, it's floral, and it's, it's not like the longest lasting fragrance and has great projection, but it's an easy reach for those of you that are interested in trying tobacco, but would like something more feminine. So this has uh, f white florals that soften the edges of it. So that's a nice affordable option. I would also suggest trying out Michael Kors Gorgeous. So, you know, when this fragrance first came out, first of all, I love the advertisement for it with the girl walking in her suit in New York City. New York City girl. Oh, what a cute song. <laughs> That whole campaign was adorable and I couldn't get that song out of my head. Do you know what I'm talking about? Were you singing it too? Anyway, I have a travel spray and uh, am considering getting a full bottle or asking for a full bottle for this Christmas. I find this to be a very beginner friendly fragrance with tobacco in it. So for those of you, again, that are a little afraid of tobacco and just kind of want to try out what it might smell like in a fragrance, this is probably a safe bet. It, more than anything, this is a white floral and woody fragrance, but it does have a, a nice tobacco note in there that is noticeable if you know that it's in there and it gives it a lot of depth and roundness. There is tuberose, there's jasmine, and I think orange blossom is the other uh, white sort of floral touch in here. And it's very pleasant. I took this with me to Cabo San Lucas and wore it out to dinner. You do have to like tuberose because tuberose is pretty prominent in here. So if that note turns you off, this is not for you. But again, the tobacco in here is so nice and plays very well. It's soft and it's subtle and it plays very well with the florals and the woody notes. So check that out. And then of my feminine leaning suggestions, the one powerhouse that I have to suggest for you is from BDK and this is Tobacco Rose. I 
this fragrance is something special for those of you that like something more deep, dark, and mysterious. This is this is a really rich fragrance. It has a very prominent tobacco note. It has a chocolate note, and there's rose in here also. I would say there's some woody notes too. I mentioned this in my chocolate fragrance video as an honorable mention because there is a very noticeable chocolate note in here. Although rose and tobacco, I would say, are perhaps the star players with chocolate being a really strong accompanying actor in this composition. There's a plum note in here as well, which gives it this sweet sort of dark, dark berry fruitiness. If you think about like a plum that's really super ripe, what that smells like. And I really do like this bottle as well. This is a powerhouse of a fragrance. It's strong, it's long lasting. And you need to know what you're getting yourself into with this because it's a pretty, it's a pretty potent smell. So we're gonna move more in the direction of tobacco fragrances that I find to be more unisex, but I did wanna start off with one that I think could be very easily pulled off by ladies who like a more feminine kind of a fragrance. If you wanna get just a tad bit adventurous without getting too deep into the unisex or masculine category, I wanna to suggest Tobacco Pod from For the Scent of It. This gentleman is an independent perfumer. This little fragrance here, and by the way, I would also recommend Oud Cafe from this line. So anyway, this fragrance is on the sweeter side of tobacco fragrances. To me, there's a very prominent vanilla note in here, along with a beautiful, earthy, but sweet tobacco note and a little bit of woodiness. But there's enough sweetness in here to pull this off if you want to lean feminine, although I consider this in the unisex category. I did purchase this for myself and for my husband. It smells excellent on him. There's also some spices in here. For those of you that are familiar with Tobacco Vanille from Tom Ford, which I don't own that bottle, but I have several imitations, dupes that I will talk about in this video. This to me reminds me a lot of that, but even sweeter and even spicier than that. And spicy, not in like a hot spicy sense, right? Not like in the burn your tongue sense, but spicy as in like kitchen spices, fall spices that are in here. I don't know what the spices are. I think it's just listed as spices on the description. But if I had to guess, I would say something like Maybe a hint of ginger, a little bit of cardamom, a touch of cinnamon, something along those lines. Delightful, really nice and develops well on the skin, has great longevity and very nice projection. This one fluid ounce bottle I think was in the $60 range and I would say worth every penny. My scent of the day and perhaps my favorite tobacco fragrance at the moment is this absolutely gorgeous one by Daniel Hosier and it's Ambra Tabac. I adore this. This is one of those fragrances that I have to stop myself from pulling for because I enjoy it so much. It's a very, to me, again, I consider this unisex, but like Tobacco Pod, I think this is perfectly suitable for those of you that like more feminine leaning fragrances. Try this out. This is amber and tobacco and vanilla all together. I think there's sandalwood in here also. I get a little bit of spiciness in here too, a different kind of spice than this one. This one is a little bit more kicked up, whereas this one is a little bit more subtle, like pumpkin pie direction. This is a little bit more, a little tad more heat. I think a little, a little bit more heat. But um, what this amounts to on my skin is this very sweet, spicy tobacco with a little bit of woodiness, a lot of sweetness. It smells really fantastic on me. It feels really elegant. It's a full, rich tobacco experience without being too heavy. There's some tobaccos that I'm going to mention today that do have a density to them. They're really thick uh, and heavy on the skin and can be a little bit cloying. This one is rich while still remaining a little bit on the airy side and wearable in different kinds of temperatures. So I, current favorite of the moment in terms of tobacco fragrances and a big favorite in general among my entire collection. Moving more squarely into unisex territory, I have Alexandria Fragrances Fatal de Vigny, which is a very, very good imitation of Vigny Fatal from Tom Ford. So if you've smelled that, you know that it is a little bit more spicy and sweet than Tobacco Vigny from Tom Ford. This one has a good dose of vanilla. There's a noticeable tobacco note in here. It has some suede slash leathery touches and there's a spiciness to this. So I really enjoy this on colder days. I enjoy this on cold evenings when I'm snuggling up and want to be a little bit more than just like a sweet marshmallow cloudy fragrance. I want something a little bit spicier with some kick. This is a beautiful one to put 
it on. And, and quite speaking of tobacco vanille, I have several dupes. I think I have four or five, but for some reason I can't find the other ones, even though I organize my shelves by <laughs> factory profiles. But anyway, I have three dupes slash imitations slash whatever you like to call them or affordable alternatives to tobacco vanille because I do think it is a fabulous fragrance from Tom Ford. I have had a decant of it. I've never owned a full bottle and I really like the fragrance. It's a beautiful tobacco and vanilla fragrance. To me, it leans a little bit more masculine and has some woody touches to it, but the dupe that I find to be the very best option and I think is actually more preferable to me than tobacco vanille is Al Haramain's Amber Oud Tobacco. Comes in these gorgeous bottles and the fragrance lasts forever. This is so good. <laughs> it has its own sort of spicy touch that's different from the ones that I've mentioned before in that it's not quite as sweet as some of the ones I've talked about so far. So we're leaning more heavily into the unisex category and some might find that these lean a little bit masculine. But I find this to be the best to beautiful tobacco in here spicy, a hint of sweetness and some woodiness and a great, great, great performer for cold winter days. You can also look at oil perfumery's impression of tobacco vanille. It comes in oil form, a roller ball, and you can layer this underneath your fragrances. You can use this alone. You know, you can layer it like with, with that. Um, and these are always good. Th this bottle is about a third of an ounce a little more than a third of an ounce, and these last forever. They're really, really easy to use, so you can look at that. And if you don't mind the crazy looking bottle, Pandora Scents makes tobacco vanille, unapologetically a dupe of tobacco vanille, and this is a really good one. This is Paris Corner Pandora Scents, and I really enjoy this. It's super inexpensive. I like the bottle. This has a little bit more of a root beer touch, but it's still pretty much a tobacco vanille dupe. Hands down though, the Al Main one is the best one and the one that I would advise you to get first if you're looking for that kind of scent. Still in unisex territory, and I mentioned this in my Caramel and Honey video, this is none other than the iconic Shergi from Serge Luton. This fragrance here, I would say, is maybe equal parts honey and tobacco together. So it's a really sweet version of a tobacco fragrance. However, it stays in the masculine territory thanks to a little hint of incense, like a, a splash, and a hay note that I think is fairly prominent in here. The hay, to me, reads a little bit like vetiver, if you know what that smells like. So there's this sort of dry, grassy nature to the hay note that almost feels like the back of your throat is a little dry. That's the kind of sensation that it gives you. But I do enjoy the sweetness in here, the honey in here. I find this to be a fairly easygoing fragrance with the exception of that hay note that can be a little bit difficult if you don't know how to read that or if that kind of dryness bothers you. But otherwise, I find this to be a really interesting and unique fragrance that deserves to be here in the tobacco video just as much as in the honey video. So before we head into masculine tobacco territory, I do want to share the beautiful arabesque from The Merchant of Venice. So on FragranceNet, there were Merchant of Venice uh, bottles recently for dramatic sales. So those of us that love a good discount went and <laughs> snatched a few up. I got this one and I got Andalusian Soul and I love them both. Andalusian Soul is more of a vanilla fragrance and I'll talk about that in another video. The bottles are really quite interesting, substantial and unique. That aside, this fragrance does have a little bit of sweetness in it. I do think it's fairly unisex uh, in terms of how it leans. And so there's a prominent tobacco in here to my nose. There is a little bit of a fruity aspect. There's cinnamon in here. And there's a sweetness from tonka and some benzoin in the base. I really enjoy this fragrance. I find it to be a little bit more linear in nature than some of the other ones that I've talked about, and especially the one that's coming up next that develops quite a bit on your skin. This is a fragrance that stays, even though it has some substance to it, even though it has some spice from the cinnamon, uh, it stays fairly light on the skin. I know that's hard a hard thing to describe with a tobacco kind of a fragrance, but it's not the weightiest of fragrances. That doesn't mean that it's pale. Like you smell it. Uh, it has good longevity and good projection, but it's thinner. It's a thinner fragrance in terms of texture, perhaps, is a good way to put it compared to some of the other fragrances that I've shared here. So Arabesque, an absolute beauty. Super happy to have this. So let's get into some of the more masculine leaning fragrances. 
Cure Cuba Intents from Nikolai Parfumers. I always get the name of this house wrong. Nikolai Parfumer Creature. Creature. Uh, this fragrance is thicker than some of the others. It's got some animalic touches to it from a civet note. And there's also a hay note in here like in Shergi. The other thing that's in here that uh, I think is lending to a little bit of an earthy, animalic type of a thing is a cumin note combined with licorice and anise. So I'm not a big fan of a licorice note, but there's a nice tobacco in here. There's some aromatic notes like lavender, and it's just a really interesting, unique composition. It does hearken me back to, and I have been to Havana, <laughs> some of the night spots that we went to when we visited there. Yeah, it's like men with cologne on, cologne that smells a little bit more like aftershave, has some aromatic touches along with the smell of tobacco smoke in the air, along with this earthiness, along with the humidity of the Havana night. If you've ever been or if you've been to the Dominican Republic and been to like a cigar lounge or something like that there or in San Juan in Puerto Rico, any place like that that's humid in the air where there are gentlemen like dressed to the nines that have some kind of colognes on like traditional smelling colognes and they're smoking cigars the smell of all of that sort of mingling together in the air is a little bit of what this smells like for those of you that like tobacco that's really wet and earthy like it's so earthy and so wet and so sort of freshly picked if you will that it smells almost sweet but it's still masculine Listen, this is this is fabulous, but you have to be ready for it because it's strong. And if you spray a lot, it will be overwhelming and cloying. It's Tobacco Maniac from Theodoros Kalatinis. I fell in love with several from this Greek perfumer last year, including this one. There's a sandalwood one that I'll talk about in another video that is probably my favorite from the bunch. And then, you know, like Coffee Addict, <gasps> that's Theodoros Kalatinis too. So great perfumer. Tobacco, honey, vanilla. I do think it's a little bit masculine leaning. It can be in the unisex category because the honey does give it some sweetness. But that really prominent wet earthy tobacco that's in here to me makes this a bit more masculine leaning. This is eternal. <laughs> you put this on, you're going to have to scrub this off in a shower. It lasts forever. It's very strong. This is that fragrance that's going to withstand like the very coldest temperatures and really show out uh, in the winter time. So fabulous fragrance. So there is a fragrance in the tobacco world that a lot of women wear, I think, because it was originally hyped up by Demi Rawling and just became sort of famous. Uh, and it's Maison Margiela's Jazz Club, which is actually quite a nice fragrance. Although, listen, to me, this leans masculine. It has some vanilla in it that adds some sweetness, but there's some spicy and peppery touches in here along with that tobacco and even some woodiness to my nose. There's also a rum note in here, but more than anything, I get like a peppery tobacco with a little bit of a woodsy backbone. So I find this to be on the masculine side, still lovely to wear, still has a nice little mysterious touch. And I think this has a lightness of being, if you will, like some of the others that I've mentioned and isn't like a very thick, viscous fragrance like some tobacco fragrances can be for example tobacco maniac this this one here this is thick with that honey note too this one is thinner in consistency if you don't want to spring for the maison margella one which i think these bottles run now with new pricing probably like in the 140 range maybe a couple dollars less than that but try woody tobacco from dossier it's almost identical to this. You can't tell them apart. And I think these bottles run 29, 30 ish dollars, somewhere in that range. And you get quite a bit of product for that. So another tobacco fragrance that leans masculine and still is a little bit sweet and spicy, but mostly masculine and has a pretty prominent tobacco note is Herod from Parfums de Marly, which I had a decant of and really enjoyed. However, the dupe that I have, I enjoy even more because I got it at a really affordable price. And I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm going to go with Moira or Moira. And this is from Okja. So I think these fragrances run you about $35 to $40, something in that range. And there's a fluid ounce here. And it's it's a dead on dupe for Herod and is really long lasting and lovely. So if you like tobacco, if you like vanilla, if you like cinnamon, try this out. 
So if you're a true tobacco lover and you have tried side effects from Initio, it probably blew you away at least at first. Side effect has a huge heaping dose of tobacco accompanied by a liquor note. I think it's rum. There's vanilla. There's some spices. It's deep. It's dark. It's sultry. It's mysterious. I find it to be masculine leaning, but in a very sexy way. I am very happy to wear side effect. Had a decant of it. Didn't want to pay the 300 plus dollars for side effect and got some dupes. Although I still have my eye on that full bottle and hoping that it gets to the 200 or below range and then I'm gonna snatch it but for now I have upside down from Alexandria fragrances and I also have collateral damage from Dua fragrances and I have side effect from oil perfumery all three of these, I think, are pretty fabulous dupes for side effect. There is only one side effect. It's one of those fragrances that I think you can try to dupe it, but you're not going to get like exactly there, but these are pretty darn close. So they'll do in the meantime until I wait for side effect to go on further sale because out of principle alone, I'm not paying $300 for that fragrance. <laughs> <laughs> but these are great options and long lasting. I do love the booziness and there's something like deep and dark. Like if I had to give side effect a depth, it would be like Mariana's trench depth, like the deepest part of the ocean depth. It has like this mysteriousness to it that is dark and sultry and like hard to find the bottom of it, if that makes sense to you. Because this video is getting a little bit on the longer side, I'm going to cut out a few that I have planned to talk about, and I'm going to round this video out with four heavy hitter, you know, heavy duty, really fantastic tobacco fragrances that are masculine leaning. Before I do that, I wanted to ask your advice on a fragrance. I saw rave reviews on this and just knew that it would work for me. And I should have known better because I have been very hit and miss with this house. There's some that I love from this house and others that have just been a disaster. It's come to our Sud Pacifique's uh, rum and tobacco. So rum and tobacco is what this is supposed to smell like. And the, the reviews were like, oh, this is better than side effect. No, it is not. <laughs> it is not. I don't know. There's something really sharp and screechy in here to me. And I don't know if it's because I'm having like trouble interpreting what I'm smelling. Sometimes it's like a kaleidoscope, right? Sometimes somebody will tell you something about a fragrance. Oh, I smell this or that. And you'll sniff it again. And it's like you've twisted the kaleidoscope and can now see this other range of colors. And you're like, oh yeah, I get that now. I need that kind of help with this because I'm about to give up on this. I don't dislike it. I don't like it. It's not what I thought it was going to be. And it smells nothing like side effect to me. So I don't know. I don't know what happened. Do I have a bad bottle? Like, what do y'all think? Do you have a different experience with rum and tobacco? Because I was expecting this boozy, beautiful, deep tobacco fragrance. And that's not what's here. This smells more woody to me. And there's something like super sharp in here that I just don't want to smell like. So let me know your experience with that fragrance. I do want to mention it in case there's some out there that are interested in trying that or you want to comment on that down below. Help us out. I want to talk next about flan, flan, flan your flan. <laughs> fan your flames from Nishane. So it tells you the prominent notes here. So let's read them. We got coconut. The coconut in here is so yummy. This is very masculine leaning to me. Rum, tobacco, tonka, oak moss. I don't get any oak moss in this. And then Chinese cedar wood. I do get coconut, rum, tobacco, and tonka in here. This is a masculine leaning, but has a nice base of sweetness to it this luscious coconut there's a little bit of smokiness in here it almost has like a little touch of barbecue air if you will what am i doing smelling this that's the rum and tobacco see now that's calming down into something maybe i'm just not giving that a try because it's it's calming down into like a spicy rum a spicy rum with tobacco in the background all right maybe we'll give that more of a chance but this one <laughs> I really love this. I wear this. I bought it for my husband. He's really not that into it. I don't know why. I think it smells absolutely fantastic on him. In fact, sometimes I'll just do like a drive by spritz like psh, and run away <laughs> so I can smell it on his shirt. He doesn't think that's funny, but I think it's hilarious. So anyway, yeah, a sweet, boozy, coconutty tobacco. Okay, this next one is accused of being a screechy mess. I can see how some people think that, but I still think it's wonderful. It's screechy like from the cap. So I'm talking about Mancera's red tobacco. This thing's eternal. As you can see, <laughs> we haven't gone through a lot of it. I've worn this maybe twice. My husband has worn this quite a bit and he has a travel spray of it. This is nice. 
To me, I pick up a lot of sandalwood in this along with the tobacco. I find the tobacco in here to be drier. It's not wet and it's not sweet like some of the other tobaccos that we've discussed. I find this to be a woodier, true tobacco scent, like the dried tobacco leaf is what you get here. There's an apple note in here that gives this a little bit of brightness. And I do pick up some serious sandalwood in this fragrance, at least for me. So I think this is lovely. I think you get a lot in your Mancera. Well, you, you literally get a lot. These are four ounce bottles, these Mancera bottles. And a little bit goes a long way. A spray or two, and this will probably last us until we're 90 years old. God willing that we live that long, friends. So another dry tobacco. This one is earthy. This one has that like hay-like thing, like I mentioned before with Shergi, where it feels drier in the back of your throat. At the same time, it has this wet earthiness. So it's like a paradox that way, right? Contradiction. It's a fragrance of contradictions. It's dry and it's wet. And it's really difficult to get a hold of. I believe that it's discontinued. And I just don't know where else you can find one. Although, in fairness, I haven't looked. <laughs> look to see where it's available but it's atelier cologne and it's tobacco nui this is my husband's and when he wears this i find this to be supremely sexy on him it meshes with his skin chemistry in a way that just drives me wild <laughs> wild it has a touch of mystery to it like i said it's earthy and it's dry and it has that same like wetness to it almost like the the earth smells after it rains like that tincture kind of a, a thing happening now it's a tobacco blossom note that's in here which is supposed to have more floral tones to it than an actual just straight up like pipe tobacco kind of a smell but i get pipe tobacco <laughs> i get a nice dry pipe tobacco out of this really nice in fact there's a cumin note in here that doesn't come across. Sometimes it can come across a little bit like BO, like stinky armpits or something. But here it smells like food. It reminds me of like a, an Indian dish, if you will, like that like gritty earthiness of the cumin in those dishes. So this is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Friends, I'm going to round out this video with perhaps one of my newer tobacco fragrances that I didn't think I was going to buy. And then I saw it pop up on sale and went for it and i'm glad that i did this is sitting on my husband's shelf smells fabulous on him but it smells really good on me too it's from my second favorite line because maison lancome is my fave the carolina herrera confidential line and this is mystery tobacco what a lovely cigar lounge kind of a smell it is the air that wafts from a luxury cigar lounge where there are men in their finest like linens and suits and, and all of that in there with the fedora hats the whole nine there's dark wood floors there's ebony desks there's rich dark tobacco colored leather in there there's beautiful wood paneling it's dark and it's swanky uh and it's it's posh and that's what this smells like to me it's a little bit on the drier side compared to some of the wet tobaccos that we've talked about. Like this really does smell like pipe tobacco, crumbled, ready to be put into the pipe. Okay, like that kind of a smell. And it smells how walls and furniture and curtains and all of that smell in a room where a lot of pipe tobacco has been smoked. It's kind of sweet, kind of earthy, a little bit woody, right? Because there's wood in the room. The cigar lounge has a lot of wood and leather and all of that together. That's kind of what I get from this. The bottle is quite spectacular. And this is just like that classy tobacco. Really, it's called mystery tobacco. It should be called classy tobacco. <laughs> so those are my tobacco picks. Please remember to put your favorite tobacco fragrance or the one that you're the most curious about in the comments. For those of you that see that in the comments and you've tried those and we haven't talked about it in this video, please chime in and help your fellow viewers understand what fragrances are like and whether they should think about purchasing them or sampling or whatever. I appreciate you spending some time with me to talk about tobacco fragrances and I will see you in the next video. Take care, friends.